As we embark on the month of September, a month dedicated to Our Lady of Sorrows, we also recognize Suicide Prevention Month. Data from the CDC shows that here in the U.S., suicide rates rose by 2.6 percent between 2021 and 2022. Though there was a decrease in suicide rates in the late 2010s, the year 2020 saw suicide rates start to climb again, and they have been ever since. It's also worth noting that data going back more than 50 years shows that historically, suicide rates are much higher for young men than for young women. Joining us now to discuss is Catholic psychiatrist Dr. Aaron Cariotti. He's the director of the Bioethics and American Democracy po Program at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Dr. Cariotti, thanks for being here. I was alarmed when I learned this, that despite more women being reported to have attempted suicide, it's actually young men who have a much higher suicide rate. Why is that? That's correct. It's paradoxical. Women attempt suicide at three times the rate as men, but men complete suicide at four times the rate of women. So of the almost 50,000 suicides that we saw last year in mm -hmm. 2022, 37 of the 50,000 were, uh, were men. And the reason is that men tend to use more violent and definitive means. They tend to uh, use guns, hanging, jumping, uh, whereas women tend to overdose on medications or cut themselves which also obviously can be lethal and fatal, but there is a lag time between the act and when the person uh, expires that, that allows the person maybe to reach out for help or to call 911 uh, or to change their mind. Right. And people who, people who commit suicide are often ambivalent. Part of them um, wants to escape their suffering and they see that they, they come to falsely believe that this is the only way out of that. And if we can reach the, the healthy part of the person that still wants to live, we can reduce the risk of them acting out on those uh, despairing suicidal thoughts. Right, right. And obviously, we're still seeing the effects of our world shutting down back in 2020. Right. Do you think that that's largely to blame for the recent spike that we've seen in the suicide rate? I think it's a huge factor. Uh, it's not the only factor, but the lockdowns and school closures were very significant in terms of increasing people's risk for suicide. We know that one of the key risk factors is social isolation and loneliness, and that's precisely what we did to people of, of all age groups, really, but particularly young people with school closures and lockdowns, is that we isolated them, one from another, from, from their peers, from their support group. Mm. Churches were closed. We know that religious belief and practice doesn't completely immunize a person against suicide, but it does very significantly lower a person's risk for suicide if they're tied into a religious community and if they are um, if they are members of, uh, of a religious community that uh, can give them a sense of purpose yes. and hope, help them interpret their suffering in ways that are not, you know, completely just nihilistic or despairing. Uh, all of these things are really important for giving people a, a sense of meaning, purpose, social support and solidarity that are protective against suicide. And with lockdowns and school closures, we abandon those things. Mm. Makes sense. I think it's it's worth noting, though, that suicide rates have, have been trending upward really since 1999. Mm. And so even before the pandemic, there were social factors probably having to do with a hyper focus on individualism and a, a breakdown of mediating institutions like the family, uh, diminished church attendance, diminished participation in social and civic life. All of these things, I think, were at work prior to 2020. And then we took an already bad situation where we had seen a 20-year trend of rising suicide rates. We sort of poured gasoline on that fire with our response to the pandemic, right. sad to say. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. And President Biden issued a proclamation at the beginning of this month, Dr. Cariotti, deline delineating what his administration has done to improve mental health and help people who struggle with suicidal thoughts. Um, but the statistics don't lie. Suicide rates are rising. So in your view, has this administration provided real solutions for these problems? Well, I, I think the efforts they're making are um, uh, certainly laudable, but oftentimes the efforts focus on intervening at the individual level, which certainly we need to do. If there's a person who's at particular high risk, 
they need mental health intervention, they need mental health care, maybe in a, a serious suicide crisis, they need psychiatric hospitalization to keep them safe. So all of that is, is important. But we also have to attend to the broader social and cultural factors mm. that are contributing to suicide. This is also very key. And unfortunately, I think many of the policies of this administration have continued to um, exacerbate some of those larger social factors from our pandemic response to policies that undermine the family, that undermine uh, people's ability to participate in um, in in communities of civil society freely without kind of the constant intervention of of the state. Mm. So at an individual level, yes, these policies are important, but at the broader societal level, I think there's a lot more that needs to be done, and I would advocate for, for a different public policy approach that would really strengthen the family, strengthen uh, religious institutions and other institutions of civil society. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Cariotti, we have about 30 seconds left, but I'm just curious for your take on the fact that we are seeing more places on the coasts kind of masking up again, saying that there's going to yeah. be a surge of COVID-19. If we get to a point where places start to shut down again, what is that going to do when it comes to impacting the happiness and the well-being of the American people? Well, I think that would be a tragedy if that happened again, first of all, because it's not going to achieve its public health purpose. We have plenty of data now showing that lockdowns and school closures did not slow or stop the spread of the virus in any significant way. Instead, they did enormous collateral damage. Mm. So I think if jurisdictions try to do that again, the time for civil disobedience and wide, you know, wide scale resistance uh, has come because without, put, without public pushback, People who accrue power, people who accrue money by means of these kinds of policies are going to continue to try to implement them. I think it's really time to push back for this mm. the sake of everyone's mental health. Mm. Well, I appreciate your insight on that. Dr. Aaron Cariotti of the Ethics and Public Policy Center, thanks as always for joining us. Thanks, Prudence.